In this video, we learn how to find the Bonds-Off Power Index for each voter in a weighted voting system. Here's a typical problem. In the weighted voting system 14, 10, 8, 5, 2, find the Bonds-Off Power Index for each voter. First, we need to understand the terminology we're using here. In a weighted voting system, we have voters whose votes are worth different amounts of points. We also have a quota, which tells us how many points we need to get a motion to pass. So in this case, we have four voters whose votes are worth 10, 8, 5, and 2, respectively. And typically what we'll do is we'll give these voters names. In this case, we'll call them A, B, C, and D in order. For the bonds off power index, we need to understand coalitions. And a coalition of voters is simply a collection of voters that all agree to vote the same way, either all voting yes or all voting no. So for example, we could have a coalition with A, B, and C in it. We could have a coalition with all four voters in it. We could also have a coalition with only one voter, and we could even have a coalition with no voters in it. A winning coalition is a coalition that has enough votes to win if every member of the coalition votes yes. So again, keeping in mind our example, where the quota was 14, and we had four voters, A, B, C, and D, whose votes were worth 10, 8, 5, and 2 respectively, the coalition with A, B, and C in it is a winning coalition because it has 23 votes and the quota is 14. This coalition with only B and C is not a winning coalition because it only has 13 votes and the quota is 14. We're interested in understanding when a voter is critical in a winning coalition. And a voter in a winning coalition is critical if, when it is removed from the coalition, the coalition becomes no longer winning. So let's consider this winning coalition that we saw before. It has 23 votes, so it's a winning coalition. But if we remove voter A, then we only have 13 votes, and it suddenly becomes not a winning coalition. That means that A is a critical voter to this coalition. In other words, this coalition needs to have A in it in order to stay a winning coalition. If instead we get rid of voter B, well now we still have 15 votes remaining, and so the coalition is still a winning coalition, which means that B is not a critical voter, because if they got rid of B, they would still have a winning coalition. Similarly, C is also not a critical voter, because if C is removed, the remaining voters still have enough votes to win. We also need to consider a blocking coalition. A blocking coalition is a coalition that has enough votes so that if every member of the coalition votes no, then there are not enough votes left to pass a motion. It's easy to figure out how many votes you need to do that. You take the total number of votes for the entire system, subtract the quota, and add 1. In our example, we have 25 total votes, that's 10 plus 8 plus 5 plus 2, the four different numbers for our four voters that we have, minus the quota of 14, plus 1 gives us a total of 12. So sometimes we call this the blocking number. It tells us how many votes we need to block in this system. So for example, this is a blocking coalition because it has 10 plus 8 plus 5 gives us 23 votes, and that's well more than the 12 votes that we need to block. This is also a blocking coalition because it has 12 votes. It's not a winning coalition, but it is a blocking coalition. This is not a blocking coalition because it only has 7 votes. So you need 12 votes to block, but 14 votes to win in this system. Once again, we can consider critical voters in blocking coalitions. And a voter in a blocking coalition is critical if, once again, when it is removed from the coalition, the coalition is no longer blocking. So let's consider this blocking coalition. It has 23 votes, which is way more than the 12 that it needs to block. So what happens if we remove A? Well, if we remove voter A, we still have 13 votes remaining, which is still enough to block. So that means that A is not a critical voter in this blocking coalition. Similarly, if we remove B, we have 15 votes remaining, which is still enough to block, so B is also not a critical voter. And once again, if we remove C, we have 18 votes remaining, that's still enough to block, which means that C is also not a critical voter. So in fact, none of the voters of this coalition are actually critical voters. Let's consider another blocking coalition. This coalition has 12 votes, which is just enough to block. So that means that if we remove A, we only have two votes remaining, and so it's not a blocking coalition anymore, and that means that A was a critical voter to this blocking coalition. If we remove D, we only have 10 votes remaining, which is also not enough to block, which means that D is also a critical voter to this blocking coalition. So to compute the bonds off power index, we need to look at every winning and every blocking coalition and find the critical voters in each one. We want to add up the number of times each voter was critical, 
And then the power index of a voter is the total number of times it was critical divided by the total number of times all voters were critical. So we need to look at all possible coalitions to figure out which ones are winning and which ones are blocking. A good way to do this is to count up the number of votes on each coalition. And now we know that we need 14 votes to be a winning coalition and 12 votes to be a blocking coalition. So in those winning question mark and blocking question mark columns, we'll just put a yes or a no, depending on whether or not that coalition has enough votes to either win or block. Notice that any coalition that is a winning coalition will necessarily be a blocking coalition, but you might have some blocking coalitions that are not winning coalitions. For each of the coalitions that are not winning, we don't need to find any critical voters because the coalition needs to be a winning coalition in order for there to be any critical voters. Similarly, any coalition that is not blocking, we don't need to find any critical voters because a coalition needs to be blocking before it can have critical voters. So we'll just X out those boxes. But the remaining boxes are where we need to do the analysis we were doing earlier, where we eliminate voters and try to see if the coalition is still winning or still blocking after those voters are removed. And when we do that, we get the results shown here. Again, notice that sometimes there are no critical voters in a coalition. And in those cases, we write the word none in the space. Notice the difference between crossing out a box, which we do when the coalition isn't winning or isn't blocking, which tells us we don't have anything to think about, versus writing the word none, where we actually had something to think about. We had to try to figure out if there were any critical voters. And when we thought about it, we found that there were no critical voters. So there's a big difference between crossing out the box and writing the word none. But now we're ready to figure out the power index. If we counted up the A's in the table that we just saw, there were 10 A's, there were 6 B's, there were 6 C's, and there were 2 D's. So that gives us the first part of the power index. But the power index is going to be a fraction, and the number on the bottom of the fraction is the total of all these numbers. So we take 10 plus 6 plus 6 plus 2, that gives us 24, so we divide all these numbers by 24, and that gives us the power indices that we're looking for.